Meet with God in word and sacrament. Let us say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring the light to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father eternal, give us of light and grace. We have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of Do not fear, 
saying to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs into his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. what Advent is for is that it's here as a period of waiting, waiting and anticipation. But generally, if you're anything like me, you're probably not terribly good at waiting, and we're not terribly good at waiting as a collection of people nowadays, as a society. Um, we've had the fantastic news about the imminent rollout of the vaccine, uh, and uh, we feel this has taken ages and ages and ages, and of course now we've realised it's actually only taken 10 months, which has been an extraordinarily fast time to be able to go through all the processes for a safe vaccine. That is good news of something that we've been waiting for. We've been waiting four and a half years for a Brexit deal, though I have to get Brexit in somewhere, don't you? Uh, we still don't know, do we, what's happening on that? And we are all, uh, well, maybe just me, uh, sick to the back teeth about it all. Uh, waiting. In between the end of chapter 39 and chapter 40 of Isaiah, from which we heard the start of chapter 40 this morning, they had to wait 160 years. There's 160 years between the end of chapter 39 and the beginning of chapter 40 in Isaiah. Uh, it doesn't tell you that, so you do have to work that one out. Um, and it's between the time where the, in the first part of Isaiah, where the people of Israel are facing imminent destruction and disaster and the prospect of being sent into exile. And here they are in exile and they are uh, looking ahead to what comes next. And so this points to, our readings today point to 
some of the attributes of the prophets. And a little bit later on, Christabel will be lighting the uh, two Advent candles here, with the last week's one, which was for the patriarchs, and this week for the prophets. And so we have two prophets on show this morning, as it were. We had prophet Isaiah and his words in our first reading, and then John the Baptist in the second reading. And prophets are pretty uncomfortable people. Uh, in the words of the collect that we had today, they, they point us to our sins and our wickedness. They point us to those things of which we need to repent, which generally are things we'd rather not be talking about too much. So they're uncomfortable people to have around. And in the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, we won't go into the debate about how many different uh, people that might actually have been in terms of writing that, there has been a lot about the call, the need to be repenting. And when we come to John the Baptist, particularly, we come to his call to repentance. The people of Israel there had, uh, well, had been in, under the occupation of the Roman authorities. and There was a great uh, searching of the collective soul to look for what comes next. Perhaps a bit like us now, a bit of a searching of the soul to what comes next after this pandemic and lockdown period. And so many were attracted to the clarion call of John the Baptist and from the kind of community from which he came, the Qumran community uh, of uh, those in the wilderness who were seeking a new way of living out God's way faithfully. And he was a pretty uncomfortable figure, uh, someone uh, eating honey and locusts, uh, wearing camel's hair, uh, a wild figure, a kind of eco-warrior kind of figure, I guess, in our uh, terminology. Um, he calls us to repent. And so that is one of the things that we are called to do during uh, this season of Advent. But the prophets do something else. They point to what is to come next. And uh, in uh, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah points to God who is about to act. See your God. Look up to him. And in John the Baptist's words, he points to what Jesus is going to do next for us. They point towards the hope that is amidst us. So, um, we come to the start of that reading from the prophet Isaiah, and many of you will have perhaps had the sound of uh, the music from uh, Handel's Messiah in your head as you were listening uh, to the words that Joe was reading. Those words, comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, her penalty is paid, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. They're wonderful words of forgiveness and of new hope, aren't they? Uh, as in the words of our collect today, uh, that we give thanks to God for his bountiful grace and mercy. And there's a link between our first and second readings in terms of that proclamation. Later on in the reading from Isaiah, uh, it says, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. And the word that's used for good tidings is the same as the word gospel that we have at the start of the uh, Gospel of St Mark that we heard in our Gospel reading. The good news, which we now understand as the good news of Jesus Christ. So in both of those readings, there is that hope of good news that is ahead. And fundamentally, as Christian people, we must be people of good news. That's why Mark's Gospel starts uh, with everything that needs to be said. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the centre and the summary of everything that we are about as Christian people. The prophet Isaiah goes on to explain a bit more about the, uh, the hope that we have. And it's um, a, 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 a varied hope that we have. So there is the sense of, in those first words, comfort, oh comfort my people. There is uh, a, a reassurance, a, uh, a nurturing that is going on there, something that you and I uh, need in these fragile times that we face. 
there's those words of forgiveness, that uh, your penalty is paid. So many of us uh, live our lives with great penalties on our shoulders, carrying those around with us. And even as Christians, we often don't really believe that we are forgiven those by God. We are still carrying them around with us. Uh, and these are words that those penalties have been paid. This is a God who gathers the lambs and gently leads the mother sheep, a nurturing God. But also a God of justice, one who comes with might and his arm rules for him. And then when we come to, the, uh, to John the Baptist and his words uh, of hope as a prophet, he uh, does what the prophets always do, which is point towards God. They don't point to themselves, they point to God. Uh, and so just as Isaiah says, see the Lord God comes with might, here is your God. So John the Baptist says, one who, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. Extraordinary words when he was a, a prophetic superstar. People would be drawn to him from across all of Judea. He says, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals, his sandals being the sandals of Jesus. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. So, we are to be people who can manage to wait a bit. Uh, we've, uh, a lot of us have waited patiently over recent months, and there's more waiting uh, to go on. Let's use that waiting period uh, productively and fruitfully by examining ourselves, by seeking peace with those with whom we have uh, impaired relationships, by making peace with God in our, in, in our impaired relationship uh, with him. Let's use this period to do that uh, so that we can then be those people of hope who look forward to those glad tidings, who look forward to the good news of Jesus Christ and that we can proclaim that so that all of those uh, around us and ourselves may know that that weight of penalty, that weight of sinfulness, that weight of past regret, that weight of disappointment is lifted uh, with the God who comes to comfort us, to strengthen us, to bring justice and in Jesus Christ he comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise that God is here with us now today as we go from this place and that he will always be with us whatever lies ahead. Amen. Stand to declare our faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now, in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord God, 
We thank you that we are once again able to meet in this much valued place, which is dedicated to your worship and praise and thanksgiving. We have been away, but you, of course, have not. We thank you for your constant presence with us here and in every other place. In the busyness of our lives, we too often forget you. Help us to remember that you never forget us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. These are difficult days, Lord, for many people. All of us have been disadvantaged and some damaged by the virus. Some have been bereaved, many deprived of their livelihoods, and many are afraid. But the picture is far from being all bleak. We thank you for those who show loving care for the sick, in body or mind, in the NHS and elsewhere, and for the scientists who have made such progress towards effective vaccines. Help us to remember that difficult times are also an opportunity to reflect your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Here are. In these cold winter days, we remember particularly before you those in this country and around the world who have lost their homes or never had one. We ask your blessing on whatever contribution we may be able to make to helping them through our chosen charity, Glass Door, or by other means. Help us to show generosity towards them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Advent, Lord, we also ask you to help us prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas. We pray for those who will be prevented from celebrating Christmas through political persecution or for any other reason, and for those who have no knowledge of you or of the comfort of your living word. However large our own troubles may seem, help us to remember how lucky we are to live in freedom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask your blessing on those for whom this is a time of sadness or disappointment loneliness or anxiety, or sickness in body or mind, including Eileen May Wilson, Barry Kay, Georgie Walmsley, Tony Dundas, David Hayer. We also remember before you those who have died, including Jacqueline Norman, and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, especially Dr. Alfred Russell and Paulette Laporte. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. As we embark on another week, help us more often to be aware of your presence, to be generous with our time as well as with our other resources, to be of good courage, and to rejoice in all that your world has to offer us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our anthem this morning is by Bach, Zion, Pierce, the Watchman.
please stand for the people. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Do please sit as I prepare you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ the Lord will come again in glory. As we watch for signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of angels and archangels in heaven, forever praising you and singing. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting of the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and form us into the likeness of Christ, and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth, to feast with St. Mary and all your saints at the table in your kingdom. 
where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share
Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world, and would send him again to be our judge. Give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work with your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit for the notes. two or three things. First of all, most importantly, it's lovely to have uh, Martin Calderbank with us here this morning. Um, Martin was here before I was here um, as uh, an ordinand uh, doing his uh, uh, period of training uh, for ministry. Uh, and uh, it's lovely, Martin, to have you back here presiding uh, at the Eucharist uh, this morning. We look forward to many such visits again uh, in the future. Uh, this evening we have Evensong at 6 o'clock, which uh, Christabel is going to be leading, and then tomorrow evening, it's you again Christabel, isn't it? Yes. Busy week. <laughs> Le leading uh, Compton, which is at 8 o'clock uh, in the Langton Chapel. Uh, I hope by now most of you or will have seen uh, details of the different Christmas services that are going to be taking place. Um, you, I think it's important to note that uh, a lot of those services, not all, a lot of those services uh, are going to be ticketed because of our reduced capacity uh, at Christmas time. Um, and so it's worth saying that not all of the places are ticketed. We are leaving some room for those who come unticketed uh, for those particular services. But obviously there aren't a huge number of those unticketed spaces. Um, so it's better if we can uh, know who's coming through the tickets and then uh, it's, it's late comers who can come with those remaining ones. It will mean, I'm afraid, that perhaps at one or two services, already our 10 o'clock on Christmas Day uh, is uh, rather commercial terms. So it's sold out, it's not sold out, but uh, all, all the tickets have, have gone. Um, but they're, they're, it, it, so if you're desperate to come at 10 o'clock, there will be space for you to come a little bit early. I think it's probably the, the right steer on that one. Um, we, uh, 8 o'clock on Christmas Day is not ticketed, so there we are, that's a challenge here. We can get out of the pre turkey in the oven. Um, uh, we will be having carols outdoors, weather permitting, I hope, on Monday the 21st and Tuesday the 22nd. Uh, those are not ticketed, and also that will be an opportunity for you to be able to sing, because we'll be outdoors, social distance, but we will be able to sing. So uh, that's a different sort of thing on offer. Uh, and you'll also have seen in the mailing, I hope, that we're going to be having an nativity trail around local roads. So uh, it'd be lovely if you're able to put some nativity scene in your front window, if you have a front window that can be seen from the road, from the pavement, um, so that we'll have a little map that people can follow to go round um, barns, again, in a socially distanced way, something that's, that's not a particular uh, gathering altogether. So again, it works very well with our current uh, circumstances. So do please contribute to that if you're able uh, to do that. Uh, also to say we've got a, uh, three performances of A Christmas Carol taking place, um, Shadow Road Productions, on the uh, 17th, 18th and 19th of December. Again, that's uh, a ticket, so do please uh, book up for that if you're able to. Um, I think it's worth mentioning, just going back to the Christmas services, that our carol service, or carol services this year, uh, are a little bit earlier perhaps than some years, so it's next Sunday evening the 13th, 6 o'clock at 8 o'clock. So do please um, come along to that if you're able to. Um, and there's various other things in the mailing. I don't think I need to go into those in detail now. Um, just to say, as we leave, just we were trying to be careful about not creating huddles, holy huddles, uh, in church, we are going to be asking you to leave column by column. Uh, so I think Phil is going to helpfully stand by each column to sleep. So starting on my far left here, if that column could leave first, then the next one, and so forth, just to avoid uh, too much of a huddle indoors, uh, we'd be really grateful if you're able to do that. I think that is all the notices for now. Thank you. I'm 
I could just add um, my thanks to you, Rector, for inviting me back. It, it is wonderful to be here again and to see so many familiar faces. It's wonderful to be back. Now, please stand and pray to God for that. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. 